There were 12 of us to begin with, by Ian Gordon. With thanks to our producers, Ashley Lindsay, Robert Daniel Picard, Wes Sale, and Cameron Seegers. Chapter 7 Green Drake, December 31st, 1989. The man in the extravagant dress shirt dubbed Green Drake had been a murder mystery event regular. Up and down the country, he would often be found putting his analytical skills to good use in all manner of settings. From the Cluedo-inspired events hosted every Halloween at the Pumpkin House in the heart of Lancashire's West Pennines, to the bi-monthly coastal murder mysteries of Norfolk, presented by the murdering minds of Munsley. He even held a number of awards, a dozen plastic television toppers, and was generally known to those who moved in the same circles as a shrewd, competitive, and comically uncompromising would-be gumshoe. Lying there on the cold wooden floor of the dining room at Miller's Manor, his cold face awash with a dreadful cocktail of frozen emotions, his closest acquaintances might have gone so far as to say that his death would have been a lesser concern to him than his inability to solve the mystery. Ever the enthusiast, was the man whose real name had been Carkit Lee. But his present company, who had barely got to know him in the short time they'd spent together, were very concerned with the nature of his passing. What? What happened? asked Andrina timidly, her brief role as captain forgotten. He choked to death, that's what happened, White Admiral answered, still sobbing. But it's, it's just soup, pure liquid— nothing to choke on, Andrina continued, her cheeks marred by tear-smeared eyeliner. Right, Blue Bottle agreed, his breathing heavy and laboured. It looked like a reaction to something, an allergic reaction, perhaps. Nah, Nightcrawler blurted, with undue confidence. A man with allergies would have been more cautious. New Forest shook her head. Know that for sure, do you? she asked. It's a safe assumption, I reckon. Fools and the foolish— New Forest muttered, looking from Nightcrawler to the lifeless body of Green Drake on the floor. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, Black Garden chipped in, his hard eyes targeting New Forest. If we're so foolish, he continued cynically, why don't you tell us what you think happened to the man? How should I know, she said with a shrug of her shoulders. All I'm saying is that it's foolish to presume to know. Okay, okay, time out, Blue Bottle inserted, waving his hands in front of his face. The man is dead. End of story, he continued, gesturing towards the body on the floor. There's some serious shit going on here, and until we've figured out what that is, we need to keep it together. Easier said than done, False Widow muttered. I mean, what if he was poisoned? What if the others, the missing, she added, emphasizing the word, were really murdered? Come on, no, White Admiral muttered. Don't bring the stooges into it. Green Drake here just suffered an allergic reaction, just like Blue Bottle said. Hesitantly, Blue Bottle nodded, in an effort to reassure False Widow. But her attention returned to the prostrate form of Green Drake on the floor, his face puffy and blue, his bloodshot eyes forever fixed in a ghastly, searching gaze. A lengthy silence followed. Black Garden eventually broke it. The truth of the matter is, he began, we have no way of knowing what happened to him. We haven't a doctor among us, and we're unable to leave this place until the roads are clear. We have no means of contacting the outside world, and— He stopped mid-sentence, a look of dawning realization filling his face. The soup, he said suddenly. How many of you tasted it? The other contestants confirmed that they'd all sampled the gazpacho. Even Andrina, who, initially, along with Black Garden, had been reluctant to do so. You don't think— Andrina started, only to be interrupted by Black Garden. No, no. Listen. It all makes sense now. And Black Garden proceeded to outline his revelation. It had occurred to him, quite abruptly, that, despite the fact that Green Drake had died at the dinner table, 
The host, or hosts, whoever they were, hadn't intervened. But despite the advent of a genuine emergency, nobody in on it, as it were, had chosen to reveal themselves, which could mean only one thing, that the death of the man in the flashy shirt was planned. It was murder. And we should have known, Black Garden continued, eyeballing Bluebottle. You identified the mayfly on Scarlet Darter's bed. It was another warning. You're right, New Forest agreed. Every time someone's disappeared, a clue's been left behind in their wake. And every time, False Widow put in, the focus of the clue has later disappeared, or was murdered, Nightcrawler surmised. White Admiral, who saw himself as the skeptic of the group, kept quiet on the matter. He was much too disturbed by Green Drake's passing to contribute to these escalating suspicions. What do we do now? Bluebottle asked of nobody in particular, and nobody answered. A minute passed. It lasted an eternity. Snapping the contestants out of their reveries, Bluebottle spoke again. This is going to sound a little macabre, but I think we should put the body outside, on ice, so to speak. It's cold enough that he'll be preserved out there, which, as I'm sure we all know, is important if a crime has been committed. Several blank faces met his suggestion. Andrina grimaced. But Black Garden, who was growing increasingly assertive, offered to assist Blue Bottle with the moving of the body. And moments later, the two men were carrying the lifeless body of Green Drake out of the dining room and into the kitchen. From there, the pair trudged along the path carved earlier in the day by Blue Bottle and Nightcrawler, and placed the body some seven or eight paces along it, to the side of the path in deep snow. The wind was blowing again, and above, the swollen clouds were once more threatening to unleash another flurry of snow. Grisly task performed, the shivering pair returned to the warmth of the manor, and reunited with the other contestants in the dining room. The atmosphere in that stuffy space was tense. The remaining seven guests studied one another with suspicious eyes, trust a fleeting thing. There was a real killer among them. Of that they were certain. The host was clever, calculating. This individual, whoever it was, had planned murder at Miller's Manor meticulously, so much so that he or she was able to move among the guests in a near-invisible capacity. And it was due to this shadow-like quality that none of the contestants there at the dinner table could even surmise as to the host's identity. Was the killer at large in the depths of the house, or right there among them in the dining room? There had been twelve, and now there were seven. Four were missing, and one was dead. White Admiral, having reflected somewhat on the present situation, spoke up. It just occurred to me that if clues are left behind following the disappearance or death of a contestant or whatever, then shouldn't there be a clue in Green Drake's death? Five of us haven't left the room since it happened, New Forest said. Nobody's had the chance to leave anything behind. Granted, Blue Bottle put in, but what if the clue was in the death itself? I'm not sure I follow, New Forest confessed. As in, the way he died, Blue Bottle clarified. An allergic reaction? White Admiral speculated. Yeah, or poisoning, Blue Bottle said, looking at False Widow. Frowning, she asked, Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, New Forest acknowledged, following Blue Bottle's line of thought. What? False Widow insisted. You know what a False Widow is, don't you? Blue Bottle continued. False Widow nodded. A spider, of course. If my code name had been Black Widow, I might have been concerned. She's right, New Forest added. False widows are only mildly venomous. That said, it could still be a clue. The lady named after a spider backed up against the wall. So, what? What do we do now? She stammered. We grab what we can from the kitchen, Black Garden began, and hole up in one of the bedrooms upstairs, a nice small space where we can all keep an eye on one another, just like we did in the reception hall the other night. Nothing... Weird happened that night. The other contestants assented, too shocked and fatigued to argue with what, after all, seemed like a completely logical suggestion. Then tomorrow, at first light, 
the man who had worn his fair isle cardigan to dinner continued, we're going to have to see about getting out of here on foot. I, for one, do not intend to stay here any longer than is necessary. Again, the others agreed, paying little heed to the howling wind that, by the second, was increasing in ferocity. Half an hour later, the remaining seven contestants were locked in Black Garden's room at the northwest end of the gallery. Again, a two-man vigil was arranged, and, to offset the unnerving stillness and the oppressive suspicions, drinks were passed around, in addition to light snacks, including crisps and rich tea biscuits. And there they settled for the remainder of the evening, quietly eating and silently drinking, all the while haunted by the return of the storm outside. Every last one of them thought of Green Drake, their deceased counterpart, out there in the night, at the mercy of the blizzard. Visions of his red velvet shirt flapping like a flag on the snowscape filled their minds. Some even considered the possibility that he wasn't really dead, particularly White Admiral, whose train of thought ran something like this. Just another stooge. Climbed to his feet the second they dropped him in the snow. He's with the others right now, scheming, probably roaming the corridors, climbing the stairs, sh sh shuffling towards the door. And he looked towards the bedroom door, trembling, his apprehension returning with a vengeance. He downed a glass of brandy, lay back on the makeshift bed he'd assembled on the floor, and closed his eyes, doing everything in his power to push the vision of the dead man to the back of his mind. Just before he drifted off, one final thought crossed his mind, one that troubled him deeply. Somehow he felt that it wasn't a threat from without that he needed to be concerned with. The threat was within, right there, in Black Garden's bedroom. He hoped it wasn't so. Thanks for listening today, ladies and gents. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for the next part of There Were Twelve of Us to Begin With. And until then, 